Welcome everybody. The Torah tells us, Kedoshim to you, Ki Kadosh, Ani Hashem Elokeichem. The Jewish people are supposed to be a holy people, to emulate the holiness of Hashem Himself. One of the major ways in which we do that is by keeping the laws of Kashrus. Keeping the laws of Kashrus means, of course, eating kosher food, having separate dairy dishes and meat dishes, and also keeping all of our utensils kosher. The Torah tells us in a couple of places, both in Parshas Tzav and Parshas Matos, that, that there is a method for kashering utensils. This video and series of videos is for the purpose of a teaching all of the basics and the fundamentals of kashering. Much of it is focused upon Pesach, which of course is the season of kashering, as we all know, but kashrus and kashering is relevant the entire year. So I hope that you will enjoy and learn much from these videos. My name is Rabbi Yaakov Lopin, and I am a mashkiach for the CRC and have been for several years. For this video, we're going to be showing you some methods for how to kosher the average home kitchen. These steps have been approved by the based in of the CRC, and in fact, during this video, on occasion, we'll be hearing some input from our Av based in, Aravyona Reis Shlita. If we have an item that has been used for non-kosher or for chametz, and we'd like to kosher it to be able to use it for kosher food or for Pesach, it will require to go through the koshering process. What that will do is that will remove the tam, or the flavor that is absorbed within the item. Before we can begin to do that, there are three restrictions that are in place that are going to guide us as to whether or not we'll be able to do that. The first restriction that we have for koshering would be if someone was afraid that the item would break or would be ruined by the method that was used. For example, these items here would require Liwan, a torch, to kasha them, and a person may be afraid with that method that they would ruin the item and not do such a good job on them. Number two, the standard way in which we kasher is through hagala, which is boiling water, and because of that, items that have small cracks or crevices in them cannot be koshered properly because there may be food or residue that cannot be reached and stuck in between the cracks or crevices. A prime example of that would be this grater, this item over here for a food processor, as well as the knife over here, the area where the knife, the blade, and the handle come together in a joint over here is also an example of something that would be very difficult to kosher because of food particles that could be stuck in the middle. Lastly, Hagala can remove things that are absorbed into natural materials, such as wood, metal, and stone, but it cannot remove things from other materials, such as glassware and pottery. Items made from cement and the like cannot be koshered through Hagala. This is going to be very relevant as we move forward and discuss which countertops can be kosher. When we kosher with hot, scalding water, safety is imperative. Before we even begin, there are a few steps that we should take to make sure that we have a safe environment. Number one, make sure that we don't have any things hanging or loose, such as a tie or jewelry around. And make sure we're wearing loose-fitting clothing. It's a good idea to roll up your sleeves as well to make sure that they're out of the way. Number two, make sure that any children are at a safe distance from where you'll be koshering from. Number three, also make sure that as you're doing it, you have mops and towels around so that any water that around can be absorbed so that no one will slip on it. One of the simplest things to kosher through Hagala is silverware. First thing that we do is we find our silverware and you carefully want to look at the forks first through the prongs to make sure nothing is sticking in between them, make sure they're clean. And of course, all the silverware, same as with anything, has to have not been used within the past 24 hours. You also just want to make sure that the knives also don't have any joints where anything could have been stuck in between any food or any hummus. Finally also, here we have a slotted spoon, which as we discussed earlier, 
cannot be koshered, and so we're going to set that aside. Now, what can we use to kosher with? What kind of a pot? That's a very common question. The answer is any pot. It can be fleshik, it can be milchik, it can be chametz, it can be regular food, it can even be a non-kosher pot. Again, as long as it's perfectly clean and hasn't been used within the past 24 hours. The method that we're going to use is with boiling water. Once we have a rolling boil, we can begin koshering the silverware. Once you notice that the boiling has stopped, wait for a brief period for the boil to restart, and then you can restart adding silverware to the pot. Pots are koshered much in the same way that we did silverware, with agala into a pot of boiling water. Hagala's kalim is different from tzvila's kalim. When we immerse new utensils in the water to do tzvila's kalim, the entire utensil has to be underneath the water at once. If even a little bit of the utensil is sticking out from the water, then the tefillah is invalid. However, when it comes to Hagalah's kalim, it is perfectly acceptable to kasher one part of the utensil at a time, as long as eventually all of the different parts of the utensil come into contact with the boiling water. First, I'm going to show how we do a small pot. We have a rolling boil over here in a larger pot. And the pot is completely inserted inside, along with the cover. And after that, it is rinsed with cold water. If the item is too big for the pot, the method we use for koshering is to do it a little bit at a time, such as this cover, which is lowered and slowly rotating through the boiling water. Once again, we rinse it with cold water when we're done. And again, we must remember that this can only be done if the item had not been used for 24 hours and it is completely clean. To kosher this pot itself, the method that we use is to make it overflow with boiling water. The way to do that is you take a smaller pot that already has hot water in it and it is lowered into this pot to make it overflow. Once again, we must stress before we do that, make sure that we have towels on the floor, make sure there are no children around. Again, we want to do this in the safest way possible. Then we turn off the gas and we make sure to rinse the item in cold water. Some countertops need to be covered because they cannot be kashered for Pesach through Hagola or Iwoi. However, the Magen Avram records a custom that even those countertops that may be kashered for Pesach should still be covered up because there might be cracks and crevices in the countertop that would lead to the possibility of some chametz residue making its way into Pesach food. However, when choosing a proper cover for your countertop, it's important to choose a cover that is strong enough that it will not allow any liquids to seep it through and that will not have any kind of an exposure from the part of the countertop that is covered with the food that will be on top of the covering. Assuming your countertop is made of a material that can be koshered, what you want to make sure is that it's clean, dry, and that it hasn't been used within the past 24 hours. One more note, if there's any discoloration on it, that does not present a problem for koshering, but you definitely want to make sure that any food particles are not stuck to the surface because those will have to be removed. Also, pay careful attention to see that there are no cracks or crevices because those will have to be repaired before it can be koshered. For this method of koshering, we're going to be using boiling, scalding pots of water. And obviously for that, we want to make sure that we do it safely. That's going to require us making sure that we have towels nearby so that we can get the water quickly. A mop. We're going to use some heat proof gloves for this as well. And we want to make sure that we do it slowly and methodically to cover all the countertop areas. Also, we want to make sure that we have protective footwear and that there are no children around as we do this process. In preparation for this koshering, 
We have set up several pots of boiling water to make sure that we can do this properly. It's important for us to note that you must use the very same pot of water that is boiling on the fire, not to dip a separate pot into it and to transfer. Again, we're going to go slowly and methodically over the countertop. To do an entire countertop, most likely you're going to need to use more than one pot of water. Therefore, it's a great idea to have several pots boiling, or alternatively, you just need to refill the pot and wait till it boils again to continue the koshering. What about using a steamer for koshering the countertop? We're going to talk about that in our next segment. One koshers a countertop, it requires pouring boiling hot water on the countertop. That is known as eroy. Now, eroy can be a messy affair. One has to be very careful, for example, to dress properly and to ensure that it be safe so that you not burn yourself. Remember, safety comes first. Chamiva sakanta me'isura. But some have asked, maybe we can make it easier by using a steamer. Can you use a steamer to kasher a countertop? So the CRC follows the position of Ramosha Feinstein, which is that one cannot kosher with steam alone. Rather, the steam would need to condense into water, and that water would have to reach the temperature of boiling so that it would be boiling hot water. Most steamers do not satisfy these criteria. Either the steam does not condense into water, or if it does condense into water, the water does not reach a boiling hot temperature. There are some expensive steamers in which the steam does condense into water that is boiling hot and the CRC only recommends those special steamers. Hello everybody, my name is Shalom Fishman and I am the Kosher's Administrator at the Chicago Rabbinical Council. Today we're going to be talking about steamers and our very qualified Mashkia, Reb Yaakov Lopin, will show you exactly how to do it. But I have one important message beforehand. It is incredibly complicated, and you need a lot of expertise in knowing how to use a steamer when you kosher a home. You need to know the type of steamer. Most steamers that you can buy on Amazon for $150, dollars $300 do not kosher al pi halacha. You need a very advanced one. We've done a lot of research. For example, the one I'm holding right now is known as the Tornado. VS4. We've researched it. This is the right one. But it's not just getting the right steamer. It's knowing exactly how far away from the countertop that you will, ac you will accomplish koshering. If it's too far away or too close to, you won't accomplish. Therefore, the message today is pay very close attention to the expert in knowing how to do this. And my main point is that before we come to Yom Tov of Pesach, there are many signs up that go up in the shoals, in the neighborhoods, koshering service by some extra people that have extra time, some bacharim. It's great as long as they have very strong rabbinic endorsements that know exactly how these people are doing it. It takes great expertise. And now I give you over to Rabbi Yaakov, who will show you exactly how to do it. But again, Make sure the people that you are hiring to do the job of koshering for Pesach in your home know exactly what they're doing, how they're doing it, what type of machine they got, because one point off, you actually are not going to be koshering your home for Pesach. Acha kosher la Pesach for everybody. Of course, as with any koshering with boiling water, before we begin, we need to make sure that our service is clean, dry, and that it hasn't been used within 24 hours. With this machine, we're going to give it about a 10 second warm up to get the temperature up, and then we'll begin.
As you may have noticed, the proper way to do it is slowly and deliberately over each part of the sink. Koshering a sink is done in a similar way that we use for koshering a countertop, which is hagola. Of course, before we begin, we need to make sure that the material that the sink is made of is suitable for koshering. If a sink is made of cheres, it's made of earthenware, made of porcelain, then it cannot be koshered. So what do you do? So the solution is that you place a basin and the sink and you place your dirty dishes and silverware in that basin and wash them there. But there could still be a problem if hot water comes into contact with the outside of the basin from the sink because then the chumitz tam in the sink could be transferred into the basin itself. So the best solution is to place the basin on a rack on the top of the bottom surface of the sink so that the basin will not come into direct contact with the sink at all. The CRC's website has a full list of sink materials which may and may not be kosher. Second thing to note, as we said in the beginning of this video, items that have small holes or crevices cannot be kosher. And most sinks have two of these components. The sink top will have an aerator and a drainer, which both have small holes or crevices, and these cannot be kosher. These items should be put away till after Pesach, and they are easily and inexpensively replaceable. Before we begin, we must make sure that the sink is clean, dry, and it hasn't been used for 24 hours. And once again, a safety reminder, we want to make sure that no children are around, that we have appropriate, safe footwear and that there are mops and towels around to make sure to take care of the water that is going to inevitably drip off. We also want to make sure that we have safe gloves that are heat resistant. As with our countertops, the koshering has to be done with the very same pot that's on the fire. We want to go slowly and methodically over all the areas of the sink. The best way to do it is to start from the drain and do the floor of the sink. And then slowly make your way to the walls. It's also very important not to forget the other components of the sink, the handles, as well as any area of the sink that may be overhanging the counter. If your sink happens to have a garbage disposal, that is not a problem for koshering. It can continue to be used. Also, if you'd like to use a steamer to kosher your sink, we have spoken about that in a previous segment. Some faucets have a coiled hose that can be pulled out from its base. Now, the rib portion of this hose has cracks and crevices where Chumet's food can get trapped, and therefore the hose cannot be koshered and cannot be used for Pesach. What do you do? So the answer is just make sure not to pull the coiled hose out of the base on Pesach, and then you won't have a problem. You might ask a question, but won't the water go through that hose? The answer is no, because the water actually goes through a rubber hose and does not come into contact with the coiled portion around the rubber hose. So as long as you keep the coiled hose inside of the base and do not pull it out on Pesach, you will be perfectly fine. For ovens, the easiest method for koshering, for ovens that have the cycle, is the self-cleaning cycle. Simply, the way to do that is to turn it on, let it go for its duration, and then that oven is considered koshered. In fact, you don't even need to have cleaned it off beforehand or scrubbed it. You don't even have to have let it sit for 24 hours beforehand. That method koshers it. The racks that are inside it, if you choose to keep them in there, are also koshered for Pesach. There are two ovens that have methods of cleaning that are not quite up to par for koshering. One is called Aqualift, one is called Steam Clean. Although those are cleaning cycles, that does not constitute koshering your oven. What do you do if your oven doesn't have a self-clean cycle? Well, there's a lot of work ahead of you. You must clean out the oven and scrub it completely clean. 
You must let the oven sit for 24 hours, and then you must turn it up to 550 degrees for a period of at least one hour. Even after this capturing method, there are those who are not comfortable with having the food touch the racks directly, and therefore they cover the racks with tin foil. They're also careful to make sure that none of the food touches the side walls of the oven or the floor of the oven. If your oven has a warming drawer, the way we kosher that is with a canned sterno. Before we begin, make sure the warming drawer is completely clean and hasn't been used for the past 24 hours. Then we insert our can of sterno inside of it and light it for about one hour, making sure that the drawer is a little bit open. Our sterno can should be one of methanol or ethanol, as there are many types, and ones that should not be used are ones that are made with diethylene glycol. The most common stove top that people have in their homes is a gas one, which has a live flame over metal grates. The way we kosher this is simply by turning it on to the highest temperature, and we can do all at once or one at a time, and we let this go for about half an hour. Once again, beforehand, this stovetop should not have been used for 24 hours and it should have been cleaned. Very importantly, this method does not clean the areas in between the stove, it doesn't clean the knobs, it doesn't clean anything. Those items do have to be covered as those are not going to be kosher. For electric stovetops, the way to kosher those is to turn it to the highest temperature. For the ones that have exposed coils, it is to be done for 15 minutes. For a glass top, it should be done for half an hour. Induction stovetops do not have a traditional heating coil and therefore it cannot be kashered for Pesach. The only way to use an induction stovetop on Pesach would be to use induction discs and to place the pots on top of the discs so that the pots do not come into contact with the glass surface. There are other kashers complications with respect to induction stovetops. First of all, one has to be very careful to only use one type of food with respect to, to placing on the surface of the induction stovetops, either fleshik or milchik. And if the other type is going to be used, it can only be used on top of induction discs. Secondly, on Shabbos, if one would remove a pot from the induction stovetop, then it would cause the electricity to stop flowing to the coil, which would be a problem, obviously, on Shabbos. This can also be resolved by placing any pots on top of induction discs before the beginning of a Shabbos. Lastly, if somebody has non-Jewish help in the home, that can complicate the creation of a Bishel Yisrael when one has an induction stovetop. For costuring a microwave, the most difficult part that people have is to make sure that the inside gets completely clean. This becomes a little bit more difficult because we have the grates along the side here that cover the light and a few other things, and those have to be carefully cleaned out. Once that's done and it's completely clean, it's relatively simple. The next step is to remove the glass plate inside, which cannot be koshered and then to insert inside of the oven a bowl of water and to close the microwave to turn it on for 10 to 15 minutes until the chamber becomes completely filled with steam. Note, even after having done that, many people are careful on Pesach to cover or to double wrap any foods that go inside a microwave oven. To wrap this up, we've discussed many items that people regularly want to kosher in their kitchen. But what about other items? like a barbecue grill, an ice maker, refrigerator, dishwasher, how do we go about koshering those? Well, to find the answers to those questions, you can simply go online to askcrc.org, that's askcrc.org, type in the item you wish to inquire about, and some instructions should pop up that will let you know how those items can or cannot be koshered. Thank you very much for watching. And we wish you much hatzlacha in kashering your kitchen.